Uh, now, for more details about the interim report, I'm joined in the studio by our finance reporter, Sue Lannan. Sue, this interim report was certainly very complex, but there were a couple of key points that came out. Now, what stood out for you? Well, very much. Commissioner Kenneth Haynes saying that these problems, this terrible misconduct we've heard about, greed and the search for profit is the primary cause. Now, he was very clear on that. We've seen him be very strict during the Royal Commission with particularly bank executives. And he said in this interim report, quote, too often the answer seems to be greed, the pursuit of short-term profit at the expense of basic standards. And he gave an example. How else is charging fees to the dead to be explained? And we've seen that. We saw that earlier in the year that the Commonwealth Bank admitted that they charged fees to the estates of dead people in what's known as the fees for no service scandal. More recently, we've heard that National Australia Bank has done it in regards to superannuation accounts and AMP has also admitted that it charged fees to the estates of dead people. Mm. Just take us back through some of the misconduct that's actually been highlighted through the Commission. Well, during the Commission has looked at a number of issues and this report focuses on the first four rounds of hearings. So that includes consumer finance, uh, includes things like car loans, mortgage broking and financial advice. And we've heard some very terrible stories. For example, earlier in the year, we heard that there was a, a Ca a loan, a cash flow loan scandal at the mm. National Australia Bank, mm. and it in fact sacked some people because of it. There has been criminal charges laid against some people. So basically, what was happening? Um, uh, people were giving uh, envelopes full of cash to branch managers and they were getting loans in mm. response to that. We also heard about the introducer introducer program where professionals. In, including a gym instructor, got a lot of thousands of dollars in commissions mm. to, to introduce people to the bank so that, that they could get loans. We've also heard about the mistreatment of very vulnerable people, people being given credit card insurance when they wouldn't even be able to claim on it. So students and people on disability pensions and also people on car, getting car loans and being mm. ripped off, being charged huge, huge interest rates they can't afford. And of course, AMP. We heard that AMP has uh, uh, lied to the regulator, the ASIC, more than 20 times about the fees for no service scandal. And also, in the wake of that, their chairman, their chairwoman, Catherine Brenner, and their CEO, Craig Miller, had to step down. And AMP is possibly facing criminal charges. The National Australia Bank's already facing criminal and civil charges because of the fees for no service scandal. And as I understand it, the NAB boss has made a statement. What did he have to say? Yes, he's just put out a statement. He said that he's had the opportunity to read the summary of the Royal Commission interim report. It is uh, three volumes. Mm -hmm. He says, for us at NAB, where we have made mistakes or done the wrong thing, we will own them and fix them. It is difficult to face the statement of profits before people, but it, this is exactly what we need to confront. Banking was built on putting people first and earning the trust of customers. We must return to these principles once again, rather than continuing to be short-term managers. We've heard this lots before from the mm. banks. We've heard this before from Andrew Thorburn. The misconduct still continues. With this great exposure from the Royal Commission, it will be interesting to see if the banks do actually change their practices, although they have been refunding people. Mm. So far, about $260 million has been returned to people because of the fee for no service scandal. And we, as I said, we've seen some executives go, including Andrew Hagger, who was the head of wealth management at the National Australia Bank, taking responsibility for the fees for no service scandal. All right. So we've seen some personnel go. We've seen them lose money as well. Has this interim report uh, affected their share prices in any way? Yes. Well, we've seen the share prices jump today. Mm -hmm. The context of that is that the share prices of the big banks and AMP have been shattered because of the Royal Commission. They've lost billions of dollars in market value. This interim report wasn't as bad as the banks expected. We've got the, if we have a look at the charts now, the report coming out actually saw the share market rise because the bank, the finance index jumped. It was in the red before. Once the report came out at about quarter past two, it rose. So now in late trade, we've got the, uh, just after the close of trade, the ASX 200 has, is up 44 points. Now turning to the movers, Westpac has jumped. It's up 1.6%. 
earlier it was actually up more than 2%. Earlier in the day, Westpac was lower. That's because it warned it expects a $230 million hit to earnings. That's as it refunds customers for paying for financial advice they didn't receive and also provisions for the cost of litigation. AMP is up 2% nearly. National Australia Bank up more than 2%. Commonwealth Bank's risen more than 2%. ANZ also higher. And we also saw, saw Freedom Insurance, which is not covered by this report, but as you re recall, Freedom Insurance made unsolicited calls to people, including a young man who had Down syndrome. And they sold him a range of insurance, including funeral insurance. Their share price has jumped nearly 23%, but their, their share price has been battered over the past few months and they are another firm that could face criminal charges. Now, joining me to discuss the interim report from the Banking Royal Commission is Professor Thomas Clark. He's the Director of the Centre for Corporate Governance at the University of Technology, Sydney. Uh, Professor Clark, thanks for joining us. What's your reaction to this interim report from the Banking Royal Commission? Well, the shock and awe of the Banking Royal Commission continues with a thousand page report that will thump onto the desks of the CEOs of the banks of Australia. Uh, we've had Anna Bly of the Australian Bankers Association saying the banks have got to move from a selling to a service culture. And we've had the CEO of the NAB saying we've got to put people before profits. Well, the question is, how are they going to deliver this? Is greed the cause of the misconduct, as the Commis Commissioner Hayne has said? It's, it's greed in the sense of the pursuit, single-minded pursuit of short-term profit as the only objective of the banks. They've forgotten their relationship with their customers, the, the duty of r remaining honest and uh, uh, demonstrating integrity. Everything has been given up for short-term returns. Now, in the report, Commissioner Hayne was critical of the regulators, APRA, the banking regulator, and in particular ASIC, the corporate regulator. Do you think that the Australian Securities and Investments Commission is too weak? Light touch re regulation has given way to soft touch regulation. The banks saw that, sorry, the regulators saw their purpose as to create stability in our banking sector, and they succeeded in that. They wanted to create solvency in the sector. They succeeded in that. But what they were really doing was creating a comfortable monopoly in which misconduct could thrive. And that's why the banks are so profitable. They're more profitable in Australia than in any other advanced industrial country. And that's because of their higher fees and what we've seen, a litany of misconduct where people have been charged without services. Now, do you think that ASIC, if it had more resources, and we heard earlier that the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, said that if ASIC asks for more money, the government will look favourably on that. If they had more resources, would they be tougher or is it a cultural thing at ASIC? I think they do need more resources to do the inquiries that they need to do. However, what they do need also is the government accepting that ASIC and APRA should do their job. The officials of ASIC and APRA have always felt that the government would be not pleased if they were to intervene with the banks in, in the progress of the banks uh, to maintain their stability, their profitability uh, and their preeminence in, in, in our economy. This, this has got to be carefully measured and, and tempered with the, the banks performing uh, as they should, which is, which is with honesty and integrity towards their customers. Now, what about the law? In the interim report, the Commissioner questions whether or not the law should be stronger, and he says maybe they should be simplified. Do you think laws concerning financial services should be tougher? They should be stronger and clearer, and what they should indicate very clearly is that it's the interests of the customers and the clients which are paramount, not simply the pursuit of profit. Now, do you expect the findings from the recommendations from the Royal Commission, which will be handed down in February, do you expect the government to fully implement them? I do. I expect the government to take these findings very seriously, and the Australian public would after what they've witnessed. The HIH Royal Commission, early in the 2000s, since the failure of our biggest general insurer, led to a stream of recommendations by the Royal Commission which were all implemented by the Howard government and by Peter Costello as treasurer. And we can expect the same commitment to the Royal Commission's findings, I hope, from any future government. OK, Professor Thomas Clark from UTS in Sydney. Thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot. And that's all from me.